Welcome to my channel. My name is Teddy and I'm a knitwear designer. I'm coming to you from Harlem, the Netherlands, and this is a podcast in which I'm sharing my inspirations, projects on my needles and new designs. Please subscribe if you like it here and enjoy the episode. Hi everyone, welcome back. I finally found some some strength to sit down and talk a little bit. And uh, even though my thoughts are not as much around knitting these days and mostly around the news and um, home and... Uh, Ukraine so I really I still really needed to sit down and talk a little bit about knitting and uh, share some things with you I've been I've been sharing a lot on Instagram as probably most of you know I am Ukrainian and um, my husband is also Ukrainian. We left Ukraine in uh, 2012 and um, for different reasons. My husband got a job first in Hungary, then uh, here in the Netherlands and um, I left to study in Germany for my PhD. So finally, five years ago, we ended up here in the Netherlands settled, bought a small apartment and um, yeah, found a new home even though both our families and most of our friends are still back in Ukraine so on the morning of February 24th it was um, a huge shock for us we didn't know what to do we, we were terrified by the prospect of a long war and um, we still are our families either physically can't or don't want to leave my mother-in-law just before the war broke out she broke her hip and she had a surgery so she can't really uh, walk long distances she can't stand on the train going to the western parts of Ukraine so she prefers well and she can't imagine leaving her home um, so my husband's family decided to stay in Kiev now and uh, yeah it's constant struggle every day to see if if the bombs are falling somewhere close to their house, if they still have windows and if they still have food and how safe they are. My part of the family is um, now in the northern part of Ukraine. Um, it is close to the Belarusian border. So some, I don't know, 50 kilometers from the border. And um, what in the normal times we thought was a huge disadvantage having no big roads close by and it was so difficult to get there in winter especially it came with a sort of advantage at this point it is quiet relatively quiet there and um, i hoped it will stay that way but of course we also don't know if the belarusian army is going to invade and if they come in they will block the roads towards west and that will mean that my family is also trapped in Ukraine my family decided not to leave because um, well first we recently lost a grandmother and my other grandmother is also 85 she wouldn't go 
and my brother is a young man and he won't be allowed so they are staying for better or worse that is of course difficult to accept when you are here and you have the means to help them and you know that it's possible but it's also their choice and what we can do is do our best to stop the war so that's what I've been trying to do in my own tiny steps and sharing the information and educating people and joining protests and helping refugees um, just little things that every one of us can do and hopefully help this madness to stop um, yeah so that's the situation I, I just got interrupted I ran out of space on my camera so what I was saying is that by no means I want to say that my family is special. We are all in this together. And I can't imagine what are people going through in Mariupol, Kharkiv, in Chernihiv, Bucha, those small villages next to Kiev that have been taken over and cities that are shelled every night when people don't have food and water and medical supplies and they are just hiding in the darkness of their basements not knowing what's going on outside and is it if it is safe to come out it's unimaginable sitting here in the safety of my home i don't think i can imagine what they are going through so yeah please educate yourself watch the news even though they are disturbing and maybe you're tired of them but the world has to see what's going on and ukraine needs your help because yeah the forces are uneven and i don't think we can stop it just on our own and it would be a shame if we lost it <laughs> but on a good note I started uh, sewing together the embroidered blouse my grandma made for me um so it is a it is going to be a beautiful um victory outfit for when we finally win the war and uh, i can wear it so that's already on the way and uh, i will show you a little bit of the progress in the end of this video if you are interested and um, probably the next one will be mostly about uh, embroidery and a little secret knitting project that I started on already so that will be a beautiful tribute to Ukrainian culture and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to sharing that with you okay let me blow my nose and then we can go on So, um, what I have to show you is um, the grass whispers. You remember I showed you this pullover already? And uh, yeah, this is how the neck looked like. And um, I also told you that this design was initially uh, submitted to, to a publication and it was rejected. And it was supposed to be a beanie. And um, let me show you a switch. The 
so this is my lovely swatch basket. No, oh, this is something a sneak peek. And uh, the one that Katsy claimed for her bed now. So this is how this watch looked like. And uh, when I I used this pattern for the neck on the pullover first, and then I thought like, yeah, of course I'm, I have to make a, a hat as well because it does look beautiful. So this is how how it looks. This texture and um, the cables and slip stitch ribbing here, it does form a really nice crown of the hat and um, it actually fits really well and uh, holds the shape really nicely. Um, I'm really really happy with that and uh, yeah the hat is ready basically almost so we did a wonderful test and um, I will have it I think I will have it out on uh, Friday April 8th and then one week after, so the following Friday, the pullover should be out. That's the plan at least. Um, I'm trying to keep working and uh, keep everything uh, running smoothly because first of all, that's my income. And second of all, that's my way of supporting my family because I don't know what, how long the war will last and uh, what the situation will be if they will be paid their salaries and uh, yeah what the prices will be and how the whole economy will be working in the um, war times so we are preparing to to have just like save all the extra money that we can to have this extra funds for for the families because yeah we don't know what's gonna happen and we have to be ready so i will be working and i will be producing more patterns so please don't be frustrated with me when i post about the war and then i post beautiful pictures of followers it's like unfortunately no matter what happens the show must go on and um, it is also really nice for me because i can distract myself, I keep my routines and as long as I am okay I will be able to take care of, of the people I, I love and um, the people that might depend on me. So that's the plan and uh, if everything is if everything goes according to my plan we will have the patterns coming regularly as, as planned. So yeah, I will show you how how the beanie fits. It is, um, I think I made the smallest size. I don't remember exactly. There are four sizes. And um, I think I made the smallest one because Netherlands is a super windy country. And if you go on a bike, you really want your hat to stick as close to your ears as possible. And um, since I don't have much hair, I made it really, really close to the, to the skin and um, yeah, it can also be like this. So whatever your style is, um, I think it's a very versatile uh, design and it's also unisex, so a very a very nice um, worsted based beanie, fast, super fast and um, yeah, lovely, lovely, I like it. I had this idea, oh well, actually, I had this revelation um, on the first days of the war when I was actually working on this one. I realized that the top, the crown, uh, actually this, this part, they actually resemble the um, castagne. Mm. Oh, how you call it? I 
forgot. I forgot the name. Well, anyway, they resemble the um, the leaves of a, of a tree that is a symbol of Kiev, and it is um, it was um, engraved on these um, tokens that you use for metro. We used to use them before before they changed them to like electronic cards. So we had these coins with um, with a symbol of uh, of Kia with this leaf. Um, come on, I can't remember the name. Well, um, yeah. So I will insert the picture here. So on this coin, there was um, there was this um, um, picture, and uh, I actually realized that the crown has the same. Uh, kind of pattern <laughs> and it was yeah coincidence sort of so these are the news about the cross whispers it uh, was a collaboration with John Arbon textiles and they were really generous when they sent me the yarns and um, after the pullover goes out they will have a uh, kids ready for you if you'd like to use the yarns and um, kits for pullover and for beanie as well um, you can actually purchase a kit for the uh, pullover and then from leftovers make a beanie that's also really nice and um, yeah I will be sharing all this information in my newsletter and uh, on Instagram so stay tuned for that um, yeah. Another new design of mine that uh, came out in these foggy weeks uh, after the war has started was a um, pullover I designed for Life in the Long Grass um, it is an Irish brand of, um, of yeah, hand dyed yarns and they have a, a little magazine that they produce every I don't know, twice a week? twice a year? Uh, so yeah, in their fifth issue, the newest one, there's uh, my contribution and they call it Arrow, Arrow Blower. And um, I don't have a sample, of course, they have it. And I will show you some pictures that I took before sending up the sample. And I also have um, a little swatch that I made for this design. It uses two colors of their um, Highland TK weight uh, yarn and um, I used two colors this uh, brownish one and um, more uh, pink pinkish one so it's a two color uh, color work uh, design with um, I also used this uh, float technique of mine and uh, and the beautiful beautiful textured top of the yoke so it is a beautiful design it is very roomy it is very generous with the textures uh, that are transitioning into a little trim of color work it's um, very beginning beginner friendly and um, the yarn is quite chunky so it knits up really fast and uh, it was uh, actually a uh, a big pleasure to work with uh, Caroline, Caroline from Life in the Long Grass because um, they gave me complete freedom to do whatever I felt inspired to and um, yeah I I really enjoyed the, the, the process so I was really looking forward to to see what the photo shoot was and uh, how it all came together 
and who else contributed to the to the issue so yeah it is already out and um they are donating 10% of their profits to the charities helping ukraine and um i haven't seen it yet on ravelry they on ravelry they still had a little bit of a delay with publishing it, the the projects and the designs on ravelry so as soon as that is fixed and as soon as there is a page for my design there we will be able to link all the tests and um, show off a little bit of of the design because yeah at the moment um yeah we can't really because the design is not up up on the ravelry yet and um yeah there's a little bit of a of a delay there And uh, another design of mine that came out in the time, sometime in the end, it was like second half of February. Um, I'm really lost these days. So yeah, it was um, it was a design for uh, rosy green wool, and um, it was a uh, something that took about a year to actually see the world no idea why so long but i remember that i was working on my sample in february last year so <laughs> it already feels like ages ago for me but it's lovely to see to see it alive and to see the test needs and projects popping up so uh it was lovely the yarn uh, the rosy green wool uh, yarns are always beautiful they are they come in maybe not so many uh, semi shades that i like more in their like solid colors but the quality of wool uh, the silkiness the softness of it how how it works um i will show you a swatch of uh, that i did for for the design so the, the sample itself was in this uh, orange cinnamon color and this is just the, the gray one that I had before. So the way stitches f like fall in their places and how smooth everything is, it's just, yeah, it's, it's the yarn, everything is, it's just, okay, focus, come back. It's a pleasure to work with it is a little bit tricky because I think in general working with more sticky yarns is easier. It is more forgiving and um, yeah, if you're a beginner, stuck, try start with sticky yarns. It's it's easier. Uh, but working with this kind of soft and silky merino is tricky, but it also has its um, pros when. Uh, uh, yeah, when everything drapes nicely and uh, yeah, I think you know what I mean, right? So that was another thing, another update on uh, what was going on. The pattern is available for this one. So this, I will also show you the picture. So you will see there is a bit of a textured pattern around the yoke and around the hem and the cuffs. It is knit uh, bottom up and uh, the pattern for it is available in English and German on like through Ravelry on the rosy green wool uh, website I think. They should also have kits for it and um, they have a sample so if you see their booth somewhere they might um, have it on the display. Yep. Um, so now uh, we will move on to the last thing that I wanted to show you today and uh, 
that is my newest sample that I've been working on the last two weeks. Um, um, the one that uh, collected so many uh, name suggestions on Instagram. Thank you everyone who left it there. And um, I will show you it now to you and uh, tell you what I actually decided about the name. It was interesting to see when I first showed it on Instagram how this pattern had so many different associations, how it invoked different ideas for the name and um, it was it was really beautiful to see how it inspires people and um, so I spent some time thinking about it and uh, uh, I don't know channeling all the feelings um, I was thinking about strengths and resilience and um, initially I actually wanted to use this pattern all the way down the body to I don't know it's probably the way I felt I wanted to be safe I wanted to protect myself and and this is like um, body armor in a way so yeah I finished the body actually with the pattern going all the way down to the hem and then I unraveled I felt like it was too much and uh, no matter how strong we are on the outside we are still soft and and humble and gentle underneath so I decided to keep the body simple and um, then add a little bit of this uh, texture on the edges yeah like a nice metaphor for being rough and hard on the edges and really soft inside and despite this pattern resembling uh, wheat and uh, um, I don't know what else like so many grass like and uh, botanical um, thing is that you might use for for the name I decided to call it javelin I like how short it is and uh, I like the sound of it and um, I like the meaning behind it javelin from from old Celtic Mount um, Esper the, the one they used to throw um, as a weapon or um, they still do in a competitive sport and um, I wish I didn't know this it is also a name now for um, a missile kind of a weapon that uh, is used against tanks so the name is um, out there in Ukraine like uh, Bayraktar for instance which is a name for um, how do you call this a pilotless uh, kind of um, aircraft that carries missiles and um, why, why do we need to know this right but unfortunately we do and um, so I took javelin as a because it does remind spares right it does as a name for this one and um, no regrets there I think it's a beautiful name and uh, it has a special meaning so yeah I made this one um, I made this one uh, also in uh, Highland TK from life in the long grass the yarn that uh, they sent they sent to me before for another collaboration but since this whole thing started I thought that I'm not gonna able to do that and um, instead I thought that I I will do it in my own time because uh, I wasn't I wasn't ready I wasn't ready to stick to a deadline and um, 
I thought it would be nicer if I could just take my time and do what I felt like um, and when I felt like because I wasn't sure I was I was going to work and uh, yeah so I used the yarns because I had it and also this yarn is really good for textures as I showed you on the on this previous design that I did for them this um, like a waffle kind of texture here the yarn looks really nice in it and um, it holds the texture really nicely and they did the same with this one I swatched I swatched in a different shade and it's just beautiful so that was an easy easy decision to go with their yarn and uh, so I did I'm almost done with the pattern I have to do a few more things and um, hopefully by the end of this week I will be able to call for testers and then have the pattern ready by sometime in May. That's the plan at least. Um, yeah, it's difficult to plan anything right now, but that's the, that's just the plan. So if you're interested in testing, please join me on Patreon because that's where I will be calling for testers first and then um, sign up to my newsletter because that's where the call will go next and if we are still lacking testers then it will go out on Instagram so that's an information for you if you're interested to to test for me um, so I guess that's pretty uh, much everything for now I will keep you posted on um, everything that's going on here on Instagram and um, I will keep posting things about Ukraine and uh, some educational information in my stories on Instagram so if you'd like that please join me there and if there's particular topics that you're interested in um, about Ukraine uh, that I could with uh, um, well I'm not historian I'm not an expert but it's just my opinion so if my opinion matters for you matters to you so if my opinion matters to you on some particular topics please ask um, I will do my best to share as much as possible and uh, yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.